Оли Лукое by Hans Christian Andersen Tuesday As soon as Hjalmar was in bed, Oli Lukoy touched all the furniture in the room with his little magic sprinkler and immediately everything began to talk. Everything talked about itself except the spittoon, which kept silent. It was annoyed that they should be so conceited as to talk only about themselves and think only about themselves without paying the least attention to it, sitting so humbly in the corner and letting everyone spit at it. Over the chest of drawers hung a large painting in a gilt frame. It was a landscape in which one could see tall old trees, flowers in the grass, and a large lake from which a river flowed away through the woods, past many castles, far out to the open sea. Oli Lukoy touched the painting with his magic sprinkler, and the birds in it began to sing, the branches stirred on the trees, and the clouds bellowed along. You could see their shadows sweep across the landscape. Then Oli Lukoy lifted little Hjalmar up to the frame and put the boy's feet into the picture, right in the tall grass, and there he stood. The sun shone down on him through the branches of the trees as he ran to the water and got into a little boat which was there. It was painted red and white and its sails shone like silver. Six swans, each with a golden crown around its neck and a bright blue star upon its forehead, drew the boat through the deep woods where the trees whispered of robbers and witches, and the flowers spoke about the dainty little elves and about that butterflies had told them. Splendid fish with scales like gold and silver swam after the boat. Sometimes they gave a leap so that it set splash in the water. Birds red and blue, large and small, flew after the boat in two long lines. The gnats danced and the cockchafers went boom, boom. They all wanted to go with Hjalmar and every one of them had a story to tell. What magnificent voyage that was! Sometimes the forest was deep and dark and sometimes like the loveliest garden full of sun and flowers. There were palaces of marble and glass and on the balcony stood princesses. Hjalmar knew them well. They were all little girls with whom he had played. Each of them stretched out her hand and each held out the prettiest sugar pig that ever a cake woman sold. Hjalmar grasped each sugar pig as he went by and the princess held fast so that each got a piece of it. The princess got the smaller piece and the Hjalmar got the larger one. Little prince stood guard at the each palace. They saluted with their swords and caused raisins and tin soldiers to show it down. You could tell that they were prince indeed. Sometimes Hjalmar sailed through the forests, sometimes through great halls, or straight through a town. He also came through a town where his nurse lived, she who had carried him in her arms when he was a very small boy and had always been fond of him. She bowed and waved and sang the pretty song which she had made up herself and sent to Hjalmar. I think of you as often, Hjalmar, my little dear, as I have kissed your lips so soft and your cheeks and your eyes so clear. I heard your first laughter and weeping and too soon I heard your goodbyes. May God have you in his keeping, my angel from the skies. All the birds sang too, and the flowers danced on their stalks, and the old tree nodded, just as if Oli Lukoy were telling stories to them.